Hello everybody. In this video, we're going to be looking at how to do contour plots and surface plots with matplotlib. It's going to be pretty cool stuff. So the function that we're going to play with is sine x times cosine y, a relatively simple multivariable function. I've given you kind of a straightforward domain here, minus two to two in both directions. So let's jump in with a contour plot. Before we get to actually building contours, I need to set the stage and write the function down. So the function is going to be a lambda function. It takes two variables in x and y, and it was sine of x times cosine of y. I'm using the numpy sine and cosine here because I'm going to be using numpy throughout. My x, I'm going to do an x domain from my left point to my right point by some number of steps. We'll do like 10 steps. My y, I'm going to do n, np dot lin space again, negative 2 to 2. I'll do like 10 steps for that also. Okay, so you would have seen this before when setting up like a one-dimensional domain. A lin space just says, give me 10 linearly spaced points between minus 2 and 2. Um, same thing for this guy. But in multivariable, I actually need a two-dimensional domain. So I need like a square domain, and I need every single possible ordered pair in that domain. And so what we do is build what's called a mesh grid out of these two 1D domains. Okay, so I'm going to run that. 10 might be a bit too many, so let's try a little bit smaller and then I'll come back and change it. I'm going to run it, and then over here in a scratch cell, I'm just going to look at what those are. So I'm going to print off x, and then I'm going to print off y, if I can spell the word print correctly. Okay, here we go. So the first matrix here is the x matrix. The next matrix here is the y matrix. And if you think about layering these two on top of each other, the corresponding entries make up every single possible ordered pair in the 2D domain. So like negative 2, negative 2. Negative 1.2, negative 2. Or way over here is 2, negative 2. And way down here in the bottom right-hand corner is 2, 2. So really, it's like I've got my 2D domain, and the x's and y's mapped out are all of the possible ordered pairs when I'm going with six equal space, six equally spaced points. Okay, well, let's get rid of the scratch cell. Let's do more points. Let's do like 50. Now, I'm not going to look at these matrices again because they're going to be huge. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to build the function value. So I'm going to send in all the x's and the y's in the collection of ordered pairs. And now the plotting is easy. PLT dot, just like we have done in all of our matplotlib, but this time it's going to be contour. X comma Y comma F and PLT dot show. Oops. Okay, so let's run it. And I've got a nice little contour plot. Relatively simple. And if I wanted a slightly different domain, so say I wanted minus 5 to 5, I can do that. I've got a nice contour plot. I'm still doing only 50 points here, right? If I wanted minus three to three, I can change this very easily. If I want to take fewer points in the domain, I'll get a more coarse contour plot. If I take more points in the domain, I'll actually get a much smoother contour plot. And then if I wanted more levels on the contour, I can just add that to the contour command. So let's do like 20 here. You see more levels. If I do like 50, it's going to just jam packed with levels. And it gets very, very hard to see. So like 15, 20 is usually probably sufficient. So I see my nice contour plot. And now the colors are telling me highs versus lows. Okay, let's do a surface plot. Now surface plot's going to start off very similar. I'm going to import NumPy because I'm using some NumPy tools like Mesh Grid. And I'm importing matplotlib just like I have before. But now I need to import my 3D plotting tool. So MPL stands for matplotlib toolkits.mplot3d. I'm going to import axes 3D. And now this last one I'll tell you about a little bit later. So for the sake of some complete code, I'm going to just copy the code here where I created the function and the function values. There it is. And now I'm going to start building my surface plot. So I'm going to do a figure is plt.figure. Uh, I found that the plots come up to be kind of small. So I like to set the figure size to be a little bit bigger. And now I'm going to do something that's a little bit different than what you might have seen before. I'm going to create an axis within this figure. 
which is my uh, figure dot, and then I'm gonna do GCA. GCA stands for get current axis. And then I'm gonna say projection equals quotes 3D. Okay, so this projection equals 3D is actually coming from my 3D axis tools. If I just show the figure now, you should see that I have, whoa, a blank 3D figure. Okay, so I didn't have filled it with anything yet, but at least I've built up a blank 3D figure. And now I can do axis dot, uh, let's see here, I think it's plot underscore, and there it is, plot surface. And it's the same as I had before for the contour, x comma y comma my function values, and I can plot it. And it actually shows me the surface, which is rather nice. I can't spin this surface, because matplotlib only does static images. But I can set up a color map on it. So this other one here, CM stands for color map. And if I come into my surface plot, I can do CMAP equals CM dot. And now I've got all sorts of color maps that I can use. And actually, cool warm is a rather nice one. So I'm just going to do Oops, cool warm, there we go. And now I can see red is high and blue is low. Okay, so that's a relatively straightforward surface plot. Now I'm gonna copy all of this stuff and I'm gonna create this same plot one more time. Oops, I just lost my copy, let's try it again. Copy, paste. I'm gonna do the same plot one more time, but I'm going to wrap the plot in a function. And I'm gonna do one more thing. I'm gonna do x dot set, oops, not set, it's view initialization. And the view initialization does the elevation view. So imagine this like a camera looking this way and the azimuthal view, which is a camera moving this way. So I'm gonna do my elevation is equal to the E that comes into my function and my azimuthal is equal to the A that comes into the function. So I could do plotter of 45 degrees, 45 degrees, just to see what we get here. And I get a nice plot. I could do zero degrees comma 45 degrees, and I get a slightly different view on it, right? Remember, elevation is looking at it this way, so if I go like 10 degrees, it's gonna go a little bit from above. If I go like 20 degrees, it's gonna go a little bit more from above, right? If I go like 90 degrees, I should be looking from above, right, which is rather hard to see. So if I do like 30, that's probably good. And, you know, like 15, this is now looking this way, left and right. Okay, well, I can do an interactive plot on this. So I'm going to import the IPy widgets, or from IPy widgets, I'm going to import interactive. And then I'm going to get an interactive plot, which is an interactive. It calls the plotter function which I'm not gonna call individually now. The E's are gonna come for, see, the elevations are gonna come from minus 90 to 90. We'll go by five degree steps. The azimuthals, I'll do the same thing, minus 90 to 90, go by five degree steps. And then I'm gonna call that interactive plot. Okay, so let's run it. Now it starts me off in the middle and I can say, well, let's see, I wanna change my elevation to 25 and it does it. I wanna change my azimuthal angle to 35 and it does it, it lags a little bit because not all of the computation is happening locally on my machine. Uh, I'm doing this in a Google Colab notebook. So some of the computation is happening elsewhere, but I now have a way that I can manipulate 
the azimuthal angle and the elevation. So I can actually move this plot around. It's not as elegant as some 3D plotting tools, but it actually does work. Okay, that's more than enough for this video. I'm gonna stop there.